early meeting, July 11, 2023, 7.30. We are going to start out and approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, motion carries. Approval of minutes for the June 20 EDA meeting. Do we have an approval? Motion to approve. Nothing to approve. Uh, approval of historic village oh, framework on, plan. Back in a second. That was a motion. <laughs> that was a motion. Yeah. Second from second. Scott. Okay. All in favor? That was on the minutes. Aye. All opposed. Aye. Okay. All right. Approval of historic village framework plan. That's a conversation, isn't it? Yes. Yep. So um, EDA chair and members of the EDA, we had the June 29th open house, uh, well attended by historic village um, residents, which was great to get feedback from them. Um, we received that feedback. I did provide that feedback prior to the meeting um, in the packet, so you had all that information from them. Um, the major consensus that I had gathered, at least from the quick comments, was the footbridge from um, historic village area to Slab Town was kind of a big hot topic item, um, specifically. So they were looking to have that removed from the plan. Um, it is in the plan currently in the framework plan as it sits today, but they're looking to remove that. And the other one was the trails in that area. Um, individuals in that area and residents did not enjoy the fact that the trail was going to go through their backyard. Um, so we need to think about those two things when we're updating it. We will be able to update this framework plan and then pass it on to council. So the approval at today's meeting is basically an approval for our recommendation not an official approval of the plan. It is just a recommendation to bring to council. Council actually has to make the action because it is their plan they have to adopt. So um, this body has been recommended or given the duty to update the plan and then get back to the council on what they feel is the best recommended plan. Um, I can pull it up on the screen if you'd like me to. I can talk about it. Um, everyone should have had a copy of it. And I can pull the big maps out. If you want me to pull the big maps out, too, I can pull those out as well if I'm going to do that. So do what's going to be best for everyone here? It seems to me we have two things relative to the framework plan that, like, steps, if you would. is like one is do we just leave the current plan the way it is, right, which was not our intent? And based on the feedback, I would say, Probably not. And then the second would be, if there's a new plan, what changes do we make to what we presented from the feedback we had? And then that goes forward to council, and then that goes, eventually gets adopted in the 2050 comprehensive it plan, right? It, it can, yeah. But at this point, it would just be a plan for adoption for what the council's looking for, for movement on... Um, any redevelopment in that area, they would look to this plan to be able to use that. Right. Because right now it's currently guided mixed use as that one giant block, so there's, again, more freedom in that mixed use area. We would use this plan as a more of a guiding document. Um, if in the 2050 plan the council says we want to make sure that that plan, our historic village framework plan that we're updating or looking to recommend update updating for, they can most certainly adopt that as part of a chapter in the comp plan in 2050. So, yeah, again, you could recommend to not make any changes and just keep it as is, as it sits today. Um, I know that's going to be much different than what we showed individuals in the historic village. There'll still be the high-density areas. There'll still be the realignment of Levy Street. There'll be much more of a different change than what it sits today from the plan that we showed the historic village residents um, at that open house. But um, that could be a recommendation of this body if they, if they would like to do that. Again, I can pull up the big boards, we can pull it up on the screen, whatever you want to do is best and easiest. I mean, I guess what are, what are our thoughts relative to, I assume there's consensus that we want to modify the plan and send it back to council, or do we want to? Will council adjust things if we don't? Could be either way. Yeah, I mean, the council could say, yeah, we, the re EDA is recommending that we don't make any updates, and the council could say, well, we had a, you know, the information is going to be shared with council that all these changes were made or what we provided, and they're going to say, well, wh we like that plan. We're going to adopt that plan. Um, as, a, as a recommending body of the council, your value, your opinion is valued, 
and expected to have a opinion shared and the reasons why your opinion shared needs to be given to council. But council can make final decision on anything and they can reverse and say, oh, no, we're going this direction because it's their physical plan. We, we, this body has just been asked to update it and give a recommendation for that updating. Um, again, the, the, we don't want to say the work's just wasted, but at the same point, we want to make sure that the opinions are given of the body. Okay, but the uh, I'm seeing resistance to some of the trails. I'm seeing resistance to just about everything in this thing. Yep. Yep. So, if we if we approve this, mm -hmm. and council says, okay, we're going to do this, but we're going to take the trails out, or we're going to can they have that authority? Yes. Then I recommend we move forward with this and let, let council pick it apart. Yeah, I don't personally. I don't think there's any reason to change a whole lot. I mean, clearly nothing is happening for 15 to 20 years. Agreed. I mean, I don't think anything is going to happen for 15 plus years, and a lot is going to change in 15 to 20 years. I mean, this group's going to change. The council is going to change two or three times. So nothing is going to stay written in stone. I mean, it's just just an idea to start with. Need to get Agreed, something moving. Agreed, but wouldn't we want to? Try to incorporate the feedback, uh, what we think is appropriate, yep. Yep. into whatever plan uh, we're proposing. Because the the existing plan would even have more changes, you know, be, from this feedback. Because the yes. feedback, I mean, yep. the way I look at it is the existing plan would even have more change than the one we presented that night. Correct. And these people have a good common sense to what's in their backyard, which makes sense, and, and we value their opinion, but it's still council decision. It is ultimately council decision, yes. But again, this body is a recommending body, so I think the best foot forward would be to give the proper feedback of not just, here we <coughs> did some work and now it's yours. I think the idea is that they task the EDA with updating this and giving, say, an actual feedback of not just, well, here's your feedback, here you go. The council could have ran an open house. I mean. But the idea is that the, they were, they value the EDA's opinion on what is going to go down here. And I think the best thing for this body would be to give the best recommendation that you feel is, be, is, is possible and value the opinions of what was given from residents. Again, it doesn't mean you have to follow all of them, but again, you most certainly can. And I think it's the idea is that this EDA gives the best recommendation to council that they possibly can. Personal opinion, I would say that the concerns that I heard that night and some of the concerns that I, we see in here in the emails is the bike path in the back of your property. Yep. Now, I love bike paths. Um, my goal is a thousand miles this summer. Um, <laughs> would I want a bike path in the back of my property? Probably not. So. And I heard we heard that, so I think we need to pass that along to as our recommendation. Now, the bridge across the Crow River, um, where that goes, I don't I don't know where that is, but it seems to me if yeah, there if there the is to be a bridge, it wouldn't need to inhibit existing personal properties. Um, it could be at the end of a street that will that be the most um, cost efficient um, probably well, I think not. that's kind of the plan but the issue was I think some of the property owners on the other side of the river the river the I guess that would be the Sherburn or uh, it's Wright, Wright County. County it's Slab Town is what they refer yeah. to Seem to be protesting the most about the bridge. Okay. Correct. That, that's what I thought I heard. <laughs> if I had the property owners correct. Seemed to me like that was not a popular option for I agree. On either side of the bridge. I think bridge. The, oh, most okay. of the residents were like, well, why would we spend, you know, whatever? It's going to be three, five million dollars on that bridge. And I mean, I, I get their point. Uh, you know, I mean, people could argue it's a bridge to nowhere, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. 
I mean, so it is at the end of the road. The question is whether it makes sense to have one or not. I mean, I like the idea of having because I think it makes the city kind of a quaint area where you could cross the river and stuff. But obviously, the opinion of the people is not <laughs> not so consistent with that. Yeah, no on the bridge. I guess I'm saying no based on their input. The input we heard. Yeah, I would, I would concur with removing the bridge. Um, and I also think it's important to, for all of us to remember that, you know, this we're taking what I sort of see as a vision of a plan, and we're taking it from it being painted with a six-inch brush to a three-inch brush. Right. You know, this is still a vision. We're not causing anything to happen with with this it's a it's a way to look at the future it it should give I, I think the zoning piece of it is is maybe more important than the rest that we were refining that a bit to make it a little clearer what you know what could ultimately go in those areas versus the kind of wide open um, situation that we have now where almost anything could go anywhere yeah good point I hundred percent agree on that <coughs> so where do you want to land this then well, me, I would, I would move the plan forward without the bridge. And the bike trails. The bike trails, uh, I think. Maybe relocate. Yeah, you know, and I, I don't know if, if um, you know, if Parks needs to have another look at that to, to talk about that. And it's not a hundred percent clear to me what Three Rivers. Um, <coughs> plans are, you know, for the Diamond Lake Trail and also where they're planning to end the West Mississippi Trail when those things come to be. Um, it's, that's been a little bit fuzzy because they've got property next to our park and they also have talked about it, um, you know, dead ending downtown in some, is, is some, at some point. But where, where do those things go? Those are, those are also, um, well, I guess the West Mississippi River Trail is more defined, but not on this end. And uh, the South Diamond Lake Trail is is a long ways into the future, so I think that's also being painted with a wide brush. So, to, I guess to get to some conclusion on that, I think we, we leave them alone because I don't think we know enough to know where they're actually going to go. Yeah, I mean, could you not defer to the you know, Three Rivers and Mississippi Park, tra you know, those and, and say that the l exact location of any trails that might connect the historic village would be determined as these other trails are built out. Uh, yeah, again, this is a plan. Um, yeah. Like, um, Dave, or, remember Prashanda said that it, it's just a plan. Right. Um, so the trails being in there is probably a good thing because it shows that we want to have bike trails, but the this is just our best location based on the fact that it was close to the river. It doesn't mean they have to be there either. I mean, again, this is a plan. If the if the residents don't like it, I don't think we're going <laughs> to force a bike trail down there. Though that's not the idea. Um, right. But it was more of a plan of okay, if we put one in, where would we like to put one along the river? So, so how do how does this group show its compassion to vote properly for the old village residents? Can I, can I ask a question? I I don't know if that's appropriate for me. To oh, ask yeah, but if you're gonna. So you step up and use the mic up front here would be fantastic. Just so you're on record, thank you so much. Yeah, state your name. And state your name and address. Um, Kristen Scott, my name. I live at 18151 Columbus Street uh, by the church. Uh, as the economic development, like that's what we do here, right? I'm curious if the these bike trails would be maintained by Three rivers, are they being maintained by the city? Like, who owns these bike trails? Right. First of all, and second of all, I mean, one of my main questions is, you know, I've lived on the river for my whole life. I grew up here. Um, like the level of the river changes quite frequently. So, who's maintaining these trails? Is there a feasible place to actually put a bike trail? Most of, I don't even live right on the river, so this isn't even in my backyard. But just. Even economically, is it is it smart to put a bike trail on the riverbank that floods, doesn't flood, is low, high, all the time? You know, how do we, like, is that economically feasible? 
Um, I feel the same way about the footbridge over the river. Beautiful. It's beautiful there. It's a beautiful place to see, but we're just basically connecting two neighborhoods for millions of dollars. There's nothing in either neighborhood. We can all walk over the existing bridge if we want to walk between neighborhoods. Um, I would love to see more pathways to walk, uh, sidewalks maintained a little better, or even paths along some of our busier roads, because once we get out of the village, we don't get to go anywhere because the traffic's going 60 plus miles an hour and it's hard to bike or walk walk safely. Um, yeah, that's it. I just think sometimes economically, I don't even know if it makes sense. So Keep, yeah. in, keep in mind that this is likely a uh, 100 to $200 million idea from somebody that hasn't even walked it. They took the picture from, a, from the picture probably and, and drew up this plan. He hasn't walked the river. No idea if a bike path could even go there. No engineer has ever even looked at it. And it's an idea that's it's going to take a lot of willing sellers and, and somebody with some huge pocket stacks and make this happen. On just the trail alone? You're on all of it. The whole plan. Yeah. I mean, the but whole I mean, plan is just <coughs> an idea. Nothing, right. nothing is actually going to happen for certain. But I think as Dave said, it's a, it's a snapshot of yeah. a future, a potential future and then I think the guidance on what that potential future looks like is the most important because we're never going to be able to, to say this is exactly what it'll be. Right. It's just guidance on that. You could say, well, we, we believe that some bike trails and or walking trails through the historic village would be good and that connecting those to the existing plans of Three Rivers and or Mississippi trails would make sense. What's the actual feasibility of that in terms of engineering, economics, et cetera? We don't know. I mean, it won't, you won't know until you get there and actually do the studies. And so I think it's more of our responsibility to say, what should that vision look like? You know, like, what are the things that people are interested in? If they're interested in, it sounded to me like from the feedback, kind of like, well, we want a residential kind of area with some small businesses, if possible. We'd like to have some small businesses, but, you know, we're never going to have a Target or McDonald's or whatever. And we'd like to make sure that, um, you know, the, the amenities that are there, the two rivers are accessible to the residents of all of Dayton, right? You know, via bikes or walking paths or boat launches or whatever. Um, and I think that's the vision we kind of got to go with without, you know, I think another part of the feedback was you probably went too far, you've overdone it, we don't need the walk bridge, we don't need the roundabout, we don't, you know. So it still seemed like the residents had some interest in kind of that vision. I just paint it, I think, from what I heard. But, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm putting too much paint around the bones that w really wasn't really there. I don't know. So do we move this forward with or without the two lines? Without the bridge and the bike trail? Well, I mean, my perspective from what I heard was that roundabout at the end of wasn't very popular. The bridge wasn't very popular. Uh, the bike trails located where they are or and or walking trails we're not, you know, particularly through people's backyards, but there, I, there seemed to be interest in walking and or bike trails, but not where they're the currently located. And, I, you know, like we said, we, no one knows if that's even feasible anyway. Yeah. If it's a trail, so it, if it's a trail, it'd be maintained by um, Three Rivers Park District or the City of Dayton, depending on who owns the trail. Trail, right. As the definition of a trail is that it would be maintained by someone other than the homeowner it's themselves so again I but I couldn't tell you if it's possible or not my guess is that based on locations there might not be just based on the one um, just this year alone with the flood that we had um, that path may be wiped away I don't know again this is an engineering document of looking at it from an aerial photo yeah not actually walking anything um, but it, what recommendation you could have is you could remove the trail from around the river area and just connect up the, I don't even know what road it is that connects South Robinson Street there, but the one to the east, and have the bike path go straight down Robinson Street onto the bridge across over to Otsego. Yeah. 
and amend the bike trail to say it's just we'd like a bike trail in this area for the West Mississippi Regional right. Trail and or through his park district or whatever and then we could just have it right go right down Robinson Street and eliminate the whole river bend of the entire bike yeah. trail that would be a recommendation you could do for that one if you're removing the footpath as well that I mean or the, the bridge as well that's another thing you could do so again anything can be adjusted and amended and we can most certainly do those updates it take much to do yeah that, so. and then I think the other thing that Dave said which is probably the most important is really the guided yep. zoning is like do you you know do, is, is what up the is what is up there what we really heard as feedback or was it more uh, you know it's basically the big purple blob versus a more refined and none of that will be decided by this plan or anything. No, like just that. a recommendation. Right? But <laughs> the recommendation would be to then when we're doing the 2050 comp plan, do we have a big purple blob like the mixed use area or do we do something more defined as this framework plan on the right. 2050 comp plan when we're updating it? Right. Mr. Chair? All right, are you going to have um, input from the, uh, the audience? At no, we're not. Point? We're not? No. Okay, so we need to figure out if we're going to uh, run it with the trail and without the bridge. So, that's correct. somebody got a motion? Carry it forward or carry it forward without those things? What do we, I'm still do we want to do a motion for each know. piece or do we want to... Is that we, how you, you want, need to have one it? motion on the table and then a second and then a vote. Yeah. If, or discussion on that and a vote. And if the vote. If the motion fails, then we would have to have another motion made okay. to... That would be passed. But look, it sounds like we have three things that we need to talk about: so the footbridge, the the uh, roundabout, and the trail, yep. and then the guided zoning. So you want to just handle those each as well, let's motions. Out of it for now, but if we pass everything but the trail and the, and the bridge. If the zoning isn't much unless you're looking to change what goes on that plan. We're not looking to change zoning at all right now. This is just. So I, I mean zoning, but is it guide, guide, it's guided, guided use? use. Yeah, yeah. And that's that, what I mean. Like I said, we're we're not going to be able to adjust anything with guided use today with this plan. Nothing can be adjusted right now. Right. But if we think that plan is the best plan moving forward, then we would use that and say when we're doing the 2050 comp plan, we would say we think this is the best guided use for this area and not the big mixed use area. But that's nothing to do with this plan today. Was approval today, but it is more guidance for the future for the 2050 comp plan. Okay, because what it, the only reason I asked that is because what I heard was you got you know, you to then your guidance to the council would be, you should do something beyond the purple blob, maybe more refined, and let them make that decision. Correct. Okay. Exactly, yep. All Correct. right. If we think this is what it should look like down there, then we would recommend that. But if you don't think this is exactly what it should look like, but you don't we, think it should be the purple blob. Yeah, we need to adjust it then. Then we need to adjust it. That was my... Okay. You got it. You got it. And provide a recommendation to the council say, well, Why? this is what we think it should look like, but it's ultimately their decision. Correct. Okay. Are you going somewhere with that? I thought I just did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me in the translation. Well, the translation is, is that you either recommend exactly what's up here to the council or you modify what's up here, which is a revision to this. Both are revisions to the purple blob, right? Um, yeah, like I said, the council can continue to use the mixed-use area if they'd like to. Right. But we would recommend that they would go with something more up Right. Or so, I mean, our, own, our only role is do we recommend the purple you know, this, everything's mixed use. <coughs> we recommend and this we'll, particular we'll plan, time. or do we modify this particular plan to what we heard related, from them? Related to guided use, yes. Again, yeah. nothing will change between now and then with the 2050. Totally plan understand plan that. Is updated, yeah. but yes. So, less the bridge and trail. Do you everything the same? Well, I mean, no blob the way it is. Um. In the grand, glorious plan, I mean, like I said, none of it, none of it is actually materialistic anyway. On a two hundred million dollar project, a three three million dollar bridge. I mean, the bridge would be very yeah, to me. It would be nice to have if you're going to fulfill that whole plan. 
-hmm. That doesn't mean 20 years from now, if somebody doesn't want to put the bridge in, that's okay. just not going to happen. So we, we need a motion to pass so this. So to me, the, the two biggest things that don't make sense in that plan are the trail and the river, because you don't know if it's going to be underwater or not, or the bank might get washed away two years from now. And that roundabout down on Robin Street, to me, to me that makes zero sense. Yeah, and to me, the only other thing on the the guide at use right now is just the brown where the houses are. Is that multi multi uh, medium density or single family? Are we talking I, these the ones? Yeah, those darker. The darker. Yeah, what I heard from the feedback was. <laughs> Pretty much, once you get off Robinson Street, they don't want anything but single family. Yep. So but I don't. I don't know if that's this was these homes that are touching together or attached ones are going to be medium density townhomes. That was what the idea was. Anything that's in not not three D renderings in quotes would be like um, the more square blobs that are a little dull yellow. Those would be existing homes, and nothing would be done to those at all. That would be um, more like single family. Those are single family homes. Nothing's looking to be done with those ones at all, at least on this plan. Um, the ones touching each other would be medium density or townhomes. Again, they could be row homes. They could be um, larger townhomes. Whatever those may look like, they would be medium density. And those would be basically the half block on the back side of the Robinson Street, basically. Um, but those that is it. Again, those main changes are... We moved from high density down to medium density in this area just based on the fact that we didn't think high density was even going to work. Traffic levels, um, buildings, water table, water capacity, sewer capacity, long, long term. It would be tough with high high density. So that is a change. It's down in densities, but yeah, those blobs that are there of the darker orange would be considered medium density townhomes. I mean, this is what I just the feedback I heard. I thought I heard some feedback that people were a bit at this concerned. This point, it'll probably be 100 years before anything gets done. Well, I understand that that nothing will probably happen. So no back trails, no bridge. I'm at change to amend. Jim, so mo so moved. So we have a motion. Keep the way for it no is. bridge and no. Well, by trails, <coughs> okay. In this plan, my discussion on that. <clears throat> which I can't really do until there's a second. Um, That's correct. To the motion. <laughs> did you? I, 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 I moved that. The motion, I yeah. moved that we remove the the bridge, um, that uh, uh, walking bridge, biking bridge, on the south side of the historic village that crosses the Crow River. Okay. That that's my motion. So you want the bridge only and not the trail? Let's do them separate. One at a time. Okay. I'll second that. I thought we had to add one motion for this. We can we do it in parts if you want to do. Okay. Do in parts so we have second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All Aye. opposed? Aye. No bridge. Go ahead. Um, I move that the um, framework plan... Um, would address biking and um, enhanced walking paths that would, um, and this is what I don't know how to say, is to, to work with um, Three Rivers Park um, District on linking their trail system and walking paths to the historic village. I'd second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? You got the park involved. That, that'll add another 20 or 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Motion passes. <laughs> <Let's hope> <laughs> <laughs> David, <coughs> does that make sense to you? It does. Okay. You know, and I think the third piece that we should, you know, take some kind of uh, uh, action on would be that, <coughs> would be that roundabout, I think. Not on this plan, but I know there's one shown for future reference for Brockton. Oh, and I think um, that, that, that one makes plan, it just ton of sense to me. There you go, that one. The second one, I don't think, I don't think we gain anything with it. Well, let's, let's crawl before we run. <laughs> right. 
I mean, there's going to be a lot more traffic there in 20 years than there is now. But the traffic Everything that's coming change. on to that second roundabout that's in the village, the number, the, church, the number of houses that are there, and you know, I mean, what's feeding it from the from the side streets beyond the traffic that's already moving it's through just there. River Road, yeah. That's okay. just my thought. Is that we we're, are that we're talking about this oh, one. Oh, no, you're not talking no. about this one, correct? You're talking about no, the one. I think that one. I think that one could use yeah. today. I agree. Okay. I'd remove that one. Thought about this one here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't seem to serve a lot of purpose. Is that a motion? Uh, I'll make that motion to remove that. I'll call it the second roundabout. Second. We have a motion on the floor. We got a second. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. And did you want to address the other roundabout up the hill? Or you're saying just wait? That's outside I of the scope. Personally, I think that one that one we could use today. Um, yeah. I, don't you know, I think it makes a lot of sense. I, I just don't see the value of this second one. Okay, does that wrap up number four? Unless there's any other recommendations, otherwise I just need a final recommendation from just to move the process forward with the changes that were made tonight. Okay. Do we have a, rec do we have a motion? Do it before. Um, do we want to address that second roundabout or no? The no. Okay. no. Okay. If you leave it in the plan, that is going to be the recommendation of this body to say that we want that. Anything that's right. in the plan. So it's still in there. You got okay. it. You gotcha. Got it. Um, I guess the only other one is the guide it used to leave it the way it is in the plan right now? Sure. To, is that what we're saying? If you adopt the plan as the rest without the changes made, okay. you are saying that that's what the guide that's what like we're to doing. See. You got it. If you'd like to make any changes, like I said, with townhomes or medium density or high density, we could do that. And we just make that a change to the plan and then move that on to council for approval. And we've had that conversation. So okay. Far, so let's not have this diverse. Yep. We can move forward. All right. We have a motion. A motion to move this forward as yep. with the changes. Correct. Yep. Correct. So the three, three changes just to clarify will be no no footbridge headed north south, no trail along the outside except for working with uh, through his park district to establish walking and bike trails that will work with their West Mississippi Regional Trail, and the third one was um, removing the roundabout on the north roundabout, which is the one in downtown historic village area. Those are the three motions that I heard. And do we have a second? Second. Sean seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Send it to the council like that. Wonderful. This will be on the July 25th council meeting. So 25th. Thank you so much. Yep. Number five, decision on the 1854 Levy Street property to sell. We've had this conversation several times. Correct. Let's put this to bed. Let's get it out of here. Do we have a motion to finalize the sale. Mr. Chair, I would like to discuss potential lawsuit about this. You, you had your say before. About a potential lawsuit? Council, do we have any issues with lawsuits on this? Uh, not that I am aware of. Uh, we provided with RFP. The only thing related to the RFP that could be a little wishy-washy is the fact that the RFP was sent out with the current zoning and not a guided use zoning. So that could be the only issue that I see at this moment. But again, I don't know where the courts would stand on that. I'm not a lawyer, unfortunately, and I don't. Has the zoning changed in that area? Adopting our new current plan? Uh, the zoning has not changed at all, so it is still considered RO. Okay. Um, the guided use did not change either with this adopted plan. Um, it is still considered mixed use as the land use shows today. Um, but uh, like I said, the RFP was sent out um, and it was sent out with the current zoning, not with the guided use zoning. So again, not an attorney. I'm not going to, if I, I can most certainly reach out to the attorney and see what the response would be from them. But nothing's changed, nothing stops this guy from doing this. Question I have at the open house, I think you mentioned you referred to that single family could not be put on here. I don't know if I mentioned single family could not be put on here. It just has <laughs> yeah, to meet density do, yeah. issues. Has to be what? How did I? I don't know. 
The question was asked if a single family could be put there, and you indicated that it could not because the guidance is multifamily. The current guided use is mixed use. So it would be intended that a density level of 12 units per acre would be utilized within the area. We'd have to do an analyzation to figure out if that use guided use would be able to meet the 12 units per or 12 units per acre if a single family home was put in that spot. My guess is that it may not, um, and just because we sell it to an individual that has it, we may have to work with them to say we want to put multifamily or a higher density on this property um, based on that. But again. We need to work through the process. This particular use fits this area. Um, again, I'd have to make sure that it would meet the 12 units per acre based on the fact, again, it, the RFP was sent out with RO zoning. It was not sent out with mixed use zoning. That is why a single family was presented as an RFP, is because of the RO zoning. Um, but again, this is guided use now because it is redevelopment. So technically, we should be using guided use. And as a mixed use district, we've got to make sure it makes 12 units per acre. Which so a single family home is not going to do. It may or may not, depends on what the other densities are in this area, but likely will not. It also violates spot uh, zoning um, laws of the state. You can't, you can't spot zone. Spot zone. Hmm. I thought the zone was could be anything. Essentially, it's all the mixed right. use is a again a large district, larger area. Right. And it has to meet 12 units per acre in order for it to be redeveloped. So we'd have to look at the entire area and say we need to have 12 units per acre in this mixed use district. My guess is, like I said, it would not meet. I think we've got to look at it from both directions. In, in, in the context of does it meet this criteria or not? If it meets this criteria, then maybe the current proposed purchaser is fine. <coughs> If it doesn't meet that criteria, then they're not, and it's got to go back up for RFG again, right? So how about we pass this on the fact that we vote on this and say, if this fits, pending legal, then we carry through with it. But at this level, we need to get us off our plate and move on. Uh, I don't know if we can make that motion pending legal because it's not going to, if legal comes back and says no, then we have... A, a null motion. That's going to be back on your plate again. So Here, Here's where we are with this thing. This, this thing should, it, it, it's a cluster from the get-go. And it should have never got here. Um, and if the idea is we're going to ask Mr. Brown to put a townhome or whatever on there, you just simply ask the question. And if that's his interest, then maybe it can go down that avenue. If that's not his interest, and you got your answer. Yeah, I believe yeah. the applicant is here. So yes, All right. he may address I'm the totally fine. Okay, can yeah, totally all of you come up for the mic would be great. Yep, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, sir. How's everyone doing this morning? Good. How are you? Good. Yeah. Uh, so I got to talk like right into it. Yep. There we go. Uh, I'm totally okay if we want to do three townhomes detached, two, one duplex, one whatever works with you guys. Uh, you know, originally. I had no guideline when I put the RFP in. I was thinking historic village. They probably want a single family home. It's a great spot. Uh, you know, a fairly large lot could you know could put something substantial there. But uh, but you know, already living there. You know, I'd just be moving across the street, so I'm fine. I'm fine developing it into row homes or you know detached townhomes, whatever whatever works. You know, along along your guys' lines, it's uh, you know. What the city sees as most value. Yeah, and I think uh, I think leaning towards, you know, something like three detached or you know a row home setting with three units. I think uh, that would kind of be the target for that size lot. Uh, I'm I'm happy to happy to put some plans through, but essentially I'm I'm here to work with you guys. I mean, it's it's a great spot. I'd like to you know I'd like to make it something not you know more than it is right now, which is just a a patch of grass on the river so uh you know okay. if you have any more questions i'm happy to happy to answer them happy to propose anything uh do some renderings but at the end of the day to me it, it doesn't matter it matter if it's a single family or you know or three detached townhomes uh i liked a lot i like you know i like the idea of developing something uh just built that house you know it's cool to think something you build is going to be there for you know 
the next 100 years, so I'd like to be a part of that. And I think, you know, being a historic village resident, I think that'd be a cool opportunity. So that's all I got. Thanks, guys. So any, any yes or no, you're okay with building what we need to build? To make yes, abs absolutely. Now, you reference detached. If you look at that historic plan, two fourplexes on a fourplex on that property is ideal. Is it a, a fourplex a, or a threeplex? A fourplex. I don't know if we'll be able to get fourplex in with current setbacks on that property. I think that the rendering may, the farthest left telling them on that fourplex may encroach on the next parcel's property line. Yeah. But I agree. I mean, the idea would be to get... The, the, I'll try the, to match other, this the other idea why I like attached is it doesn't give the opportunity to take to build one this year, another one five years from now, and another one ten years from now. It gets the plan done in a year or two. Well, I mean, maybe we should discuss what we want and go back to Mr. Rum and tell him this is what we want. If he wants to do that, then the original... That's where we are, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't know if we're going to have that discussion now or we want to have that discussion... Yeah, you can have a discussion now whenever you'd like. I mean, or we'll just get to And then he can make the decision whether that fits his financial plans. <laughs> Well, why don't we just find out, ask him first. Okay. I mean, would you want to build detached or just a three-unit building? Uh, I mean, I, I really don't have any preference. I mean, there's, like, uh, it's got me a good point. I mean, you know, even on a building perspective, it's, you know, it's, you know, if you're building four or that are attached, it's three less walls. It's, you know, you're conjoined. It's easier. You're getting it all done at once. You know, one crew does, you know, so it's, it would be easier on any front, so I really don't have, I mean, I guess to answer your question, I don't have a, a specific interest that would, so yes, thank you. All right. So three unit attached building. Yes, that would work with me. Then bring back a plan. Well, we won't well, we, a plan. We won't yeah, no, no, no. But Our primary goal here is to move this property or, or we tie it up again. Right. So he's agreed to do what, he, what the city wants there to mm -hmm. follow our guided use. There's no issue from here on. I do we all agree it. with that? Yep, I agree. Okay. And, and that can be drawn up in the... In the deep, deep, deep yeah, so I'll have to draw up the... I'll have to recraft the... Purchase agreement? Purchase agreement, only because now it'll change from what we had originally said, because the timeline's a lot less now than what was on the pr original purchase agreement that you saw. <laughs> yep. And we'll have to adjust um, another criteria to make sure that it matches with what guided zoning would be um, on that, which you're already aware of, so it isn't something that's going to be changed. And like I said, we'll have to make sure we have... Pardon? You're okay with this? Yes. Yeah, so I'll, I'll draft up another agreement. If the decision is to sell it to the individual, um, the RFP that we awarded, um, we will move forward with it. I'll draft up another purchase agreement, and then we'll have to have you review it. And then if you're good with it, we'll just have it for the next, basically, meeting to have it approved. That's why it's on this meeting. Is we need a decision on what we're going to move forward with. The <laughs> approval is not on here. That's why it's just a decision on what you'd like to do moving forward. Um, if that's what we like to do, then I can most certainly move forward with that process. Does that require a motion? Yes. Do you have a motion for this? I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now, in all fairness, I said we weren't going to have an open session. I told someone we weren't. Thank you for your time. You came up to speak. If you'd like 30 seconds to a minute to say something, please feel free to do so. Please keep it brief because we've already made our. <clears throat> okay. As it relates just to this topic, I have some questions on the um, RFP, which I have in my hand. Uh, first thing it says, it will not be sold for speculative purposes. This sounds like you just sold it for spe speculative purposes. I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. It says on the RFP, the property will not be sold for speculative purposes. It sounds like that's exactly what you just did. Um, it also says uh, the purpose of this is for the creation of affordable housing, and one of the criteria is the proposed price of the new home. Do we have any idea what the proposed price of the new home is, and are we looking for a low price to uh, uh, ensure affordable housing, or are we looking for a high price to ensure a higher tax value? Um, and again, there's the, the legal question about uh, the, uh, the property zoning, which I you know, will assume that you guys are, are going to work out. So those are my questions regarding that.
Do you have answers to that? Is that what your statement is then? That's my statement, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Although, my, my statement is also, do you have answers for those questions? We weren't going to have an interaction. We just wanted you to say your piece. That's okay. But my statement does include I, I'm, I'm expecting answers from this. I don't know council. if we want to engage this. That's up to you, Chair. It's your meeting. I'm just here to yeah. as, as staff liaison. You don't have to give me answers, but my statement includes I'm expecting answers from the, uh, the um, ad, uh, administration. Thank you. All right, five <coughs> Fisher Farms IUP comments. Yes, EDA chair and members of the EDA. Um, at the last, at the last planning commission meeting, um, which would have been last Thursday, there was a decision made on the Fisher Farms IUP, which was to move the process forward. There was a few amendments to what they did with the event center ordinance but this is a event center in long term um, looking to be put on the property that is so you saw the information directly from the Planning Commission not much related to zoning again we gave all this information to you but I just gave you the planning stuff because I wasn't sure if they were actually passed it or not and trying to get the um, pack it out is the main thing but the main idea is the site plan overall concept so this is the property that is directly across the street from Magnus Veterans did, Foundation. Did you send this out to our email? I did. Yep. Okay. okay. I still don't have my work. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, I've tried, but... I didn't get it either. Okay. So if you can just send it to my... Either. I will, yeah. ...personal, because the city email doesn't seem to be functioning. No. I, can't, I can't reset my password. <laughs> Can you reset yours? Well, I, I am in the email, but I just haven't gotten anything recently. Through that email. Hmm. Yeah, I sent it last th Wednesday. Yeah, and usually I, I get them all. Yep. And, yep. and yep. I print them out and uh, I bring I do, them. But yeah, I do my absolute best to get them on a week beforehand so you guys have plenty yeah. of time to review and, and such. Um, but what this is is basically the property across the street from Magnus Veterans Foundation is looking to start an apple orchard. As part of the apple orchard process, they're looking to host events as part of it um, with also selling the apples that they get from the trees, um, which likely won't happen for a few years based on the size of the trees that they're going to be planted. Um, they're at this point, they're looking to do tented events. Um, so they're looking to uh, basically start a process for having an apple orchard on that property. It's an agricultural use, but uh, as part of um, this agricultural use, they are using this as a primary way of earning dollars as a business. And so we cannot have businesses in agricultural districts based on other income other than agricultural. And so if they're going to be renting out the property, it defines themselves as an event center. That required a text amendment. And so that's that text amendment was made and recommended by the Planning Commission to move forward. That will be done on the July 25th meeting of City Council. Um, but as this as a business, I would like to have the EDA's input on what you feel about the Apple Orchard slash event center property being located here and or if you have any issues with it recommending for commercial purpose wise not setbacks not text amendments not anything else like that looking at it from a perspective of a business being in the agricultural district so i stand for any recommendations like i mentioned this is just an iup for comments if you have any comments those will be passed on to the city council for the july 25th meeting isn't it already uh 10 till acres and it's a uh, considered egg it currently is ag and it is, I'm going to say it's 87-ish acres total, something like that. Okay. Um, and so because normally this would be an ag thing, we wouldn't bring it up at all. But the, the issue that we have, or not the issue, but um, the caveat that's different between a normal ag district and this piece of property is that they're looking to host events here and bring people off-site to sell product on-site. Um, a typical farmer will send their corn or whatever out anywhere to so be done. So your site is owned what? Still ag? I'm sorry, what's that? This site is still considered ag? That is correct, yeah. And what do they want to change it to? It is going to stay ag, but they're looking for a text amendment to have an event center in the agricultural district. So what's the IUP? Doesn't IUP stand for? In like Interim use permit. permit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically they're saying we want to use it, we want to have an event center. Correct. And what's the difference between having that there or Magnus across the street doing the same thing? 
Um, Magnus is a nonprofit, so that would probably be the main difference, but they are not doing anything agricultural in nature for Magnus. They would just be hosting events that would be getting their brand out there, basically. Um, this is... To raise money to make awareness and all that? Correct. So they're yeah. still raising money? As a nonprofit, I mean, that's correct. But this is a for-profit <laughs> business, so that's the difference. I mean, if you look at it from a, to me, from an economic development perspective, you're saying, you know, I mean, one of the desires in Dayton is keep it more rural, more, you know, that kind of feel, but yet you're still allowing some kind of economic activity. Correct. Yep. Versus homes, basically, would be your other economic activity. I got no uh, negatives on this. Well, keep the residents in the community instead of going to somewhere else, right? Some other apple orchard. Has the um, well, chaff from the neighbors settled down because of this? I believe so. There um, were some people that were opposed to it? Yep, there were people opposed to it as no. Will this inf infringe on any of their personal rights as a private homeowner? No. Yeah. Because of the distance and the size. Distance, size, setbacks that were set by the event centers and such. All of that will have an effect on this long term, but and the setbacks and stuff are much larger than a normal home would be. From what I understand is like the main concern was the tent use versus like a building where Correct. it would be more and at this noise point, noise would be more contained or something. Yes. Yeah, so the IUP at this current moment is for tented events, um, to be able to host tented events um, on the property long term. This individual, based on like the different phases that are shown, um, second phase is looking to construct an actual event center building, which would have a kitchen and dance hall area and stuff of an event center, basically to host weddings and birthday parties and so is the tented uh, thing town halls or whatever you know. Is the tented use like time limited or something or is it just kind of as it goes uh not time limited but i believe the applicant is looking to move stuff yeah quickly forward um yeah. i don't think the idea is to have a tent set up and take it down every weekend is probably not ideal for them but what's the capacity on that for the uh the tent yeah for events to are they stated? i don't know what the event's tent size is i would say it's probably limited to 150 people, 200 people maybe. I would. That's a pretty big tent to start getting. Well, that'd be taken up with you guys and how big it can be. Correct. Any heartburn on the idea of this though? With any of you guys? I would say no comments no. And, and move forward. Yeah, although, yeah, just looking for comments. Like I said, recommendations or non recommendations from the EDA based on a business perspective because this is technically a business in Dayton. Whether it's a so culture right. business or not is beside the point. How long would the IUP be? Issued for years, isn't it? Uh, the IUP is issued for 20 years or a change of ownership. So there is a IUP is uh, considered interim, so there has to be a deadline on it. So there's typically a time deadline, and then there's typically a if something event happened, then that's a timeline. And as there's well. no way to shorten that time frame. Uh, that would be a planning commission comment. But yes, I'm just thinking like. Yep. 20 years is a long time. What about five years? Let's you know, see how it goes. If it's going well, then... I don't remember what the Planning Commission had recommended. I think it was 20 years. Who decides whether it's going well or not? Uh, that ain't, that ain't our, that ain't our decision. <laughs> yeah. They I think decide. from the business perspective, they're probably looking for more time because, you know, it might just be getting up and running in five years. It's going to take four or five years just for them trees to start yeah. producing apples and okay. grow trees. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I personally don't have any issue with this thing other than the uh, the biggest concern from the residents was the noise factor from any right. outdoor events, I mean a tent or outdoor event. I think the uh, tent was going to be up until 2025 and then and then in 25 they built the building. Yeah, it wasn't very long. Like I said, the, the landowner wants to move forward right. quicker than um, I mean, purely later. the landowner wants to move forward. It's already all parking yep. lots in and, and I mean, it's already... Well, <laughs> Until we heard about it, and then now there's piles sitting on there, so yes, that is true. So we have on the table is a no comment, and we have a no problem. Yep, that's what I'm hearing. So we want to have no problem here? No issues. So you okay, you okay with that, you Jim? See this are 150 yeah. homes, and that's more troublesome than this. One question I have around this is is with the tent. Yes. And, you know, we heard uh, at the Planning Commission meeting that the noise was a big concern. Yes. Uh, the, the traffic piece, I'm a little less concerned with because it's 
intermittent in nature but it uh, uh, with a tent would that then these events would they also need then a large assembly permit or are we bypassing that somehow with the, the IUP uh, the large assembly permit would be separate from the IUP but it is only if the um, assembly is more than 200 more people than at a time so the large assembly permit would have to be amended if we wanted to make it smaller I guess right now it would be yeah, 200 people, but yeah, that's a totally separate thought, issue. Yeah. Um, but this is not including a large assembly permit at all with it. If they have a large assembly, they still have to pull a large assembly permit. And that's got some restrictions around noise and... Correct. Yeah, then there has to be traffic, um, and so um, traffic control. There has to be a... Um, I don't know if there has to be police on site, but there has to be if there's alcohol involved with it, if it's more than 200 people, and then there's um, some sort of restrictions on timing and... The number of people in a certain area and whatever else. But yeah, there's more restrictions on a large assembly than there is with no. Fish no issue. You Sounds give that? like there's yep. no comments. Okay, moving okay. on to number seven. Here's Thank the you. discussion. What do we want to discuss? Did that get handled? Pretty much done. Yep. So EDA chair and members of EDA. This was tabled from the last meeting. That's why it's back on this meeting. Again, it's more or less a motion in a second to say that we're um, past it. Um, the city council decided that they would like to move forward with the fireworks and they contributed to the fireworks on Heritage Day so there will be fireworks on the Friday evening event September 15th um, okay. so it's handled it. so it's handled so I just need a motion to deny basically or decline the fact of purchase we need a motion motion to, motion to decline I'll second the second all in favor Aye. Aye. all opposed motion carries okay. number eight staff updates industrial commercial EDA Chair and members of EDA, I don't have anything currently for current applications. No, actually, let's talk about residential ones. Um, we do have one from... Hoping the Planning Commission I can grab that thing here. So we only have one current application for... Um, a residential development and it is on the other side of 94 I'll pull, it back up here. I'll pull up the concept plan um, just for again more or less for um, information for informational purposes but uh, for context this property is owned by the Robergs currently it is on the other side of 94 in the small triangle that we own between Rogers Corcoran Maple Grove and Dayton um, this was previously a Dominium apartment project and that got um, denied by City Council or basically shut down by City Council based on the fact there was a TIF ask with that previous request for apartments. There is no TIF ask with this um, residential development. It is looking at 374 units in this, I don't even remember how many acres it is, 25 or 30 buildable acres. It's about a 70 acre parcel total. but. Over half of it is floodplain and or wetland, so this is a very difficult site to navigate. And so basically the top half for the phase one is um, the apartment buildings up top. Um, phase two is basically these attached uh, townhomes here, and then on the bottom is more quadplexes or sixplexes, as you would see them on the south east corner of the property. Um, there will be a clubhouse and plenty of ample parking for guests to be there. There will be open space. Everything to the left of this blue line through the middle is considered floodplain, and so they will not be actively building on that site at all, but they will be using it for open space. So there will be plenty of open space for individuals to walk dogs or um, play catch or whatever else may be in this area. This is kind of in a corner, so there's not going to be a lot of traffic in this area and or ability to get places so kind of making this its own neighborhood is is was the idea by the developer and what's and why it is called the parkway neighborhood concept plan so it is kind of a neighborhood amongst itself and, um, and the access is off Dayton Parkway to the it, south. It accesses off of Dayton Parkway. So if you drove over the interchange, it would be on the left-hand side. There is a curb cut on both sides, one going north, one going south, halfway between basically the interchange itself and Brockton, roughly halfway between there. There's one access point. That access point would be where it would be utilized. This would be to the north. 
Um, nope, this would be to the south. To so the you take south. a left. Yep. So you okay. take a left. You'd go through the city of Dayton um, parcel that we own for uh, stormwater based on what we purchased for the interchange itself. I'll see if I can pull up a Google Maps. I don't know if it'll... Those yellow lines on that map were the on and off ramps of 94. Yes. That's why I thought yeah. I couldn't figure out which direction I was going. <laughs> so basically, again, this map is <coughs> extremely old, but um, essentially they're right here. You can kind of see the curb cuts here. Mm -hmm. um, it would be left through here, and then it, this is our parcel roughly here. Again, you can't really see the lines, but roughly here is where our parcel's at. It will go through the city of Dayton's parcel. That parcel is purchased for wetland and stormwater related to the interchange. And then it will go up and over this pond and then... The Roberg property starts roughly in here. Oh, so, it's okay. right. so it's on the south side of 94, directly across the street from RDO. Gotcha. Um, again, this is, I don't need comments today or anything for this. This is residential in nature, but it's always good for the EDA to know what's happening. Um, this will be on the July 25th meeting for City Council as well. <coughs> it's a busy meeting, but um, comments will probably come because of the fact that uh, there will be more residents if this goes through we may have more economic development come and spur from this property as well. All right. I don't have anything else. I'm trying to figure out where you fit in here today. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> EDA chair and members of the EDA. I had Tori, uh, who is our associate planner, too. You can meet her as well. But um, I had her here just in case any of the historic village stuff came into play with talking about zonings and guided uses and such. I had her on standby, basically, if anything came of it. If I didn't know the answer, I was going to look to Tori to have the answer for me. So we're good? We should be good. All right. Thanks, Zach. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.